On the wind-up island of Sodor, Toby was taking Annie and Clarabelle back from the construction site of the new suspension bridge with the last trainload of workers for the evening. He was happily puffing along when all of a sudden he stopped and his wheels were spinning. I wonder what's happened, said Toby, and his driver and fireman went to investigate. You're stuck, old boy. You've been stuck on a bent piece of track. I've got an idea, Toby. Excuse me, workman. Could you please leave the train? It'll make it easier for Toby to do his work. The workman clambered out of the train, and Toby pulled his hardest. But even with Clarabelle empty, the train was still too heavy to get over the bent track. Botheration! I'm so exhausted as it is, and now we're going to be stuck here until we wait for Rocky. Unless, said Clarabelle, who then whispered to the workers, who also clambered out of the train. I don't know this is going to work. You must try, Toby. For us. For us. Chimed Annie and Clarabelle together. Toby's driver opened up the regulator, and Toby's wheel slipped and slid on the bent rail. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. And sure enough, the train shot forward. Hurrah, hurrah! Toby saved the day. Quickly, workers, back on board. We have a station to get to. Yes, yes, on board, on board. Quite pleased with himself, Toby trundled on to the station where the back controller was waiting for them. Sir Topham Hatt pulled out his watch. Toby, what time do you call this? Well, sir, there was a bent rail, sir, and then I... Toby puffed and puffed and puffed and chuffed. And without him, we would never have gotten home on time. The fat controller asked the workers for confirmation, who quickly agreed that Toby had saved the day. Well, Toby, I believe an apology is in order. Congratulations on not needing for me to call a breakdown train. They're quite busy with Spencer at the moment. Never a problem, sir. I'm just working my hardest to be really, really useful. Toby, as a reward, would you like to take the very first opening train with the railway inspectors on it across the new suspension bridge? Oh, thank you, sir, but I must decline. I have promised the passengers on Thomas's branch line that I would be there to visit them, and if I'm not there, they will be disappointed. Not a problem, Toby. I'm glad to see you're sticking to your commitments. I'm sure there'll be another engine who wants to pull the train. There always is. The next day, Emily was waiting with the railway inspectors and two express coaches at the station before the new suspension bridge. Thank you, sir. I can't believe you picked me for the train. That's all right, Emily. You've gone a whole month without having an accident, and that's a new record for any of my tender engines. You should be congratulated. All aboard, sir. We're ready to depart. The fat controller hopped aboard one of the compartments with Lady Hat, and soon Emily was off, chuffing down the line, buzzing with excitement to see the new suspension bridge. The only reason the fat controller had allowed construction of suspension bridge was because the contractors who had to rebuild the gas line that ran across the railway had insisted a suspension bridge was the most efficient and reliable way to get the engines across the gas pipeline, while still allowing the workmen from the gas company to check the line for faults. However, no one had actually seen the final version of the suspension bridge, including the fat controller, and the groans that entailed as Emily approached it were heard miles around. Oh, it does not look finished at all! Oh golly, what an ugly bridge! I refuse to believe that Sir Topham ever allowed this to be built. Red and brown? Whatever were they thinking? Disgusting and despicable waste of money if I've ever seen it. Emily and the disgruntled passengers chuffed down the other side of the bridge, round the bend, and into the station. No one was impressed. I must say, sir, it's not the most attractive thing I've never seen. And the rails were all bumpy and not quite straight-like. That is not what I expected at all. Emily, please take the members of the railway board to Knapford Station. Of course, sir. Right away, sir. Then I want you to collect the man in charge of these contractors. His office is situated at Brandon Docks. I'll be back very soon, sir, so we can remove this eyesore and get on with our work. I should have realised something was up when they wanted us to go all the effort of suspension bridge. But why? Meanwhile, Diesel had been sent to a small set of yards at the end of a branch line to collect a special fuel truck. Hello, Diesel, said Hector, who was waiting patiently in the engine shed. Bah! I don't have time for cheery hellos. Where's my fuel truck? No, if that's how you want to be, then be that way. It's the inner siding closest to me. The truck with the different writing to the others. What's inside? None of your blasted business, Hector the Horrid. 
said Diesel, crossly starting to turn on the turntable. Then, all of a sudden, there was a crunch, and Diesel rolled forward between two rails. Nyaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
and I'm glad you stopped in time. I hardly imagine you'd like to have a swim in the reclaimed water like the trucks did. However, I must have the strategy to of informing you that the contractors have mysteriously vanished off the island, and so the suspension bridge will need to be properly rebuilt. That means, Cranky, you're stuck here for a little while longer, as we're going to still need some heavy stone and heavy wires to make sure that this suspension bridge actually works. Thank you, sir, but I still have one question. Where did the support go? It seemed to vanish in thin air, as if by Mr. Conductor's magic gold dust. Hmm, that is very strange. Mr. Conductor's not due to be visiting for three weeks, when I have to go over to the mainland to talk to Connor and Caitlin's owners about a new deal I proposed. I will make sure I get someone investigating that, Stanley. As the Fat Controller walked off, one of the trucks spoke up. Can I get a washdown? You won't be getting a washdown until all the other hardworking engineers on this island get one first. But I must say, today has been rather strange. Conjob suspension bridge? Disappearing supports? Reclaimed waste disasters? Hmm. All we need now is some strange explanation for everything. Strange or not strange? I just want to get rid of that smell. While Stanley had been chasing his runaway, Diesel had been slowly and carefully delivering the special oil that had been found at the yard with Hector. When he arrived at the diesel works, however, he noticed that it was getting darker and darker, as if it was almost nighttime. Suddenly, a bright light appeared, shining up into the shed of the diesel works. Hello, Diesel. Nice of you to pop by. I was fiddling a little bit with the lighting arrangements. Don't you like it? It's ever so evil. I think the longer you hang around here, the more mad you're getting. Me? Mad? No, never. Did you bring the track as you required? Were you very careful as I instructed? Of course I was careful. Now are you going to enlighten me on the contents of this ever-important barrel of yours? Of course! It's a very special new delivery from our new... Alliance. They reverse-engineered Mr. Conductor's gold dusk to make oil. That with three snaps of Pinchy can make anything teleport right into the heart of the Diesel Works. <laughs> Isn't that right, Pinchy? Diesel 10 snapped Pinchy three times. And then, all of a sudden, something appeared in the middle of the Diesel Works. Did you mean that to happen? Uh, no, I can't say I did. It's not what it says on the tin. Diesel had a close look at the part, and then remembered something from earlier this morning. Hang on. If I didn't know any better, I'd say that was a support for the new suspension bridge. Wait a second. I didn't mean that to happen. <gasps> the truck must have a leak. Quickly, get it out of here before it destroys the entire diesel works. Diesel attempted to reverse, but there was an explosion of color, and the coupling disintegrated, and the truck began to roll away. Uh-oh. The truck rolled through Vickerstown, but a quick-thinking signalman switched it into a small set of yards. The rolling fuel tanker shot across the turntable and crashed into the shed before it disappeared into an explosion of colour. The empty truck nearby was extremely confused. Where did the shed go? Diesel had turned around and raced down after the truck, but he was too late, arriving at the turntable to an empty track. Uh, what happened here? The, the truck disappeared into the sheds and the shed vanished. Hearing that, Diesel breathed a sigh of relief and quickly scuttled back to the diesel works. Sure enough, the remains of the shed had appeared back at the diesel works, right on top of the bridge support, but the truck was nowhere to be seen. Hmm, looks like Mr. Conductor's magic oil didn't quite go to plan. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you're starting to make a habit out of things going wrong. It looks like I still have to win you over with the help of our new associates. Hmm, don't worry. They installed this lighting too, and that's still working, isn't it? Uh-oh. Bother.